ladies and gentlemen, joining us on this Thursday, September 24, 2009 edition is Congressman Ron Paul, live from Congress. Just got done with a vote. We just interviewed uh, Congressman Grayson in the last hour. Great to have him on the team fighting the private Fed. Congressman, uh, it is great to have you, sir. Thank you. Good to be with you again. Uh, I want to get in the final segment into your book coming out in the Fed. But first, I've got the Times of London, the London Telegraph, AFP, dollar under scrutiny at G20 Summit, HSBC bids farewell to dollar supremacy. They say the world is now going to move away from the dollar. They're announcing global governments. Uh, President uh, Kloss, your friend, you've been over there to speak as a guest of the, uh, of the government, uh, is saying this is global government at the U.N. yesterday. So people are waking up, but now the establishment is making its move. Can you speak t to what's happening with the dollar? Well, the, the dollar, of course, today bounced up a little bit, but that's just temporary because of some announcements. But the dollar is in, in, in bad trouble, and they know it. And a lot of people ask me exactly what's going on in the G20 meetings, and, of course, there are a lot of announcements. But I think the really big stuff that goes on at these meetings is behind the scenes, and there are no announcements. My guess would be that behind the scenes, they are really, really making the plans for what's going to replace the dollar reserve standard because they're sick and tired of us getting a free ride. We get to print the money and get to spend it, and they're supposed to hang on to it as if it were gold. So, But they're, they're planning on something else, but uh, they, they have a job uh, uh, in front of them because it's not easy creating another fiat currency. Usually when a government uh, ruins a currency, they go back to... Uh, something more sound and back their currency or make gold, silver, legal tender. They don't want to do that. Uh, that's why I suspect they'll move in the direction of just a, a new world order. And I hear, and I've heard Obama recently use that term again, they got to have a new world order. And uh, they've been working on that for a long time. And I'm sure they're not worried all that much about a crisis coming, and they might look at it as an opportunity uh, you know, for promoting their cause, and that's what we should be concerned about. Well, that's what Congressman Grayson said last hour with us, is that the banks, he believes, have engineered this to create a crisis to vertically integrate society, and then they offer the solution as this new bank of the world that will fund itself off carbon taxes and Tobin taxes. Al Gore has called for that. Gordon Brown this week, as you know, has called for a new world order under the Tobin tax, and that they're just going to have regional cashless systems with the... Uh, big bank reserves already going to a cashless system, and then all the nation-state currencies will still be there, but they'll be globally standardized. Yeah, but what we have going for us is that uh, their system can't work. It's just sort of like worrying about the Soviet Union. We worried about it for a long time and had to be, and they were very powerful. But uh, even Mises, a long time ago, predicted it won't last. The system doesn't work. So what they're proposing really doesn't work. It's sort of like what they did, the IMF and our Treasury did in the 60s and early 70s. We are going to print money, and it's going to be worth $35 an ounce and, you know, guarantee that. Well, the market overwhelms. So we should be concerned. We should fight it. We should expose them, and we should do our very best. But ultimately, the markets will rule the biggest threat is probably the political threat that um, how much are they going to crack down on us how much how far are they going to go and can we ever regain uh, you know the influence on the government where their job is to protect us and protect our liberty rather than serving the special interest that to me is really the bottom line congressman the federal reserve as you know has hired the top enron lobbyist firm to come in in the last three months and demonize the in the fed protest it's come out in the baltimore sun that the army is surveilling the in the fed protest and that all protest is now being considered low-level terrorism they're trying to demonize us that way they've also told congress as you know that oh you're not allowed under the constitution to get involved in what the federal reserve does even though it's in the <laughs> constitution that the congress control the issuance of currency and and and, and, and credit and, and and set the monetary uh, policy. So isn't that the ultimate big lie to say that this thing that didn't come along till 1913, this private banking consortium, can tell Congress you're not allowed to be involved in yeah, what we do? I mean, uh, it's, it's amazing how long they've gotten away with it, but uh, we're getting the American people uh, informed well enough that 75% of the people now, when they're polled, agree with us. I think it's interesting. Uh, I can give you a little tidbit about tomorrow, and maybe Alan told you the same thing. But, you know, we're having hearings tomorrow on 12.07, and Barney Frank has fulfilled his promise to me. 
and he gave me one witness, and they were going to have two panels. Ordinarily, the majority has two witnesses against one, you know, two to one. But then they have a government panel, which has to represent the, uh, the, the body that we're addressing, which is the Federal Reserve. They were supposed to have three people testifying. Only one has agreed to come on the second panel where there were going to be two in opposition to 1207 and my one pick. Those two canceled out, too. So they're down to one person that came to testify against the 1207. And I suspect it may well be that they don't want to even be out there, you know, really chopping at the bit. They might work behind the scenes behind us, but they're not interested in taking us on in a public forum. They don't want to give any attention to it. They think it may be covered by the news networks. Yeah. Ed Bernanke or somebody like that is there, but it's too late, as you've said many times. The momentum is now beginning to shift. The people are like, why can't we audit the Fed? They're realizing that the real power structure, the real government, is the private run-for-profit Federal Reserve. And I meant to get to this issue of the hearings. Can you talk about what's going to happen tomorrow and then how you see the process unfolding in the months and years to come in bringing this corporate private banking dictatorship uh, to heel? Well, I think tomorrow's hearings will be pretty bland. That would be my guess. Probably not much media. But we'll get a recording of it. And Tom Wood is the, a good economist and historian from the Mises Institute. He'll be testifying for us. And he will have a very good statement, and he's a very bright person and knows, you know, how to handle uh, a debate like this. Barney Frank will probably be uh, not uh, antagonistic nor derogatory toward the bill, uh, and he will try to publicly pacify the people who are concerned and worried about it. But uh, I, I don't think it'll be big news tomorrow, but it's big news among our circles because... We have gotten them to a point where many others who have tried over the many, many decades and have never gotten this far. Just think, you know, Henry Royce, Wright Patman, and Henry Gonzalez, all coming from a liberal populist viewpoint, have always, and they were chairman of the banking committees, and they, they never got this far on auditing the Fed. So we are making progress, but it also might be a sign of how bad things are to wake up the American people to finally say, hey, what is this all about? What about this Fed? So I think it's the crisis that we're in as well as the time has come around. And I think our communications are so much better with radio talk shows like this as well as the Internet. This has really spread a message among people. Today I just walked out of my office. I was visiting with one of my constituents. And I had a young guy came out from his college. He said he was from Arizona. And his biggest issue was the Federal Reserve. And I think our, my constituent looked at him and said, wow, you know, he was so impressive. Some college kid from the Arizona State came up and he was fascinated, you know, with uh, with the Federal Reserve. So we are making progress. Is this the beginning of game over for the Federal Reserve? Because once they're identified as the true shadow government, the financial oligarchy, as long as they can operate the shadows and pose as a federal agency, uh, they were invincible. But once the curtain drops on the little man uh, who we thought was the big powerful wizard of Oz, once the illusion is shattered, which is now happening, uh, it begins the process of their fall. I think it might be beginning, but I don't think we're very far along because I don't think they have yet begun to fight. I mean, they are going to be tenacious. Look at what they've done with the lawsuits under the Freedom of Information Act. They are resisting. They're fighting it. Those court cases are going to go on for years. They're going to fight this. They're going to resist and argue about turning over records. So it's it's not it's not going to be real easy. I think what will happen when you have a dramatic change will be when the dollar quits working. I, I just think they're going to fight us uh, tooth and nail, and they're going to, it's going to be very very difficult. They'll find the ways to further imprison people who demand that they use silver and gold. Uh, so I I, uh, I just think that uh, it'll be runaway inflation, high interest rates, where the American people will say, yeah, I think we were told about this Federal Reserve, and uh, we need to do more. And then they'll lose all credibility. And besides, printing the money won't help that much. The more they print, the worse it'll be. Right now, they printed a lot of money to try to patch the system together. And in some ways, they have patched it together, but they dumped all the bad assets on the taxpayer. You can't have a wealthy country by doing that. That, that has that will that has to have bad results. But uh, when the dollar collapses, there's nowhere else to go. Congressman, I don't even pretend to know what's best to 
suggest you do tomorrow in these hearings. But 